So I asked you guys on my socials what you wanted to learn and I saw a pretty interesting comment that they wanted actually to review pediatric fluid management. I thought it was a very broad topic, but this was a very good idea because we're coming back off learning neonatal fluid management. So this is actually a good idea and I actually put this lecture together for you guys. So I hope you enjoy it. Grab your piece of paper and let's go. Hello and welcome to MK's Medical Review Series. My name is Dr. Moses Kazevu. This is a series on my YouTube channel where we look at medical topics in depth. Today we're going to be looking at pediatric fluid management. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell notification icon to receive notifications of such videos every time I post. Drop a comment, drop a like, and let's go. So remember that fluids are going to be making up more than half your body weight. And more than half of your body weight is going to be consisting of water. These fluids are therefore very, very essential for various indications on the wards, and they can be administered in different ways. They can be given intravenously for most of them, and we can also give them orally, such as fluids like oral rehydration salts, low molarity ORS, as well as re rehydration salts for the malnourished child. Remember that some of these fluids can also be used for topical indications, such as cleaning of wounds, cleaning of burns. And remember that these fluids are going to be replacing the ongoing losses. And the choice of fluid depends on certain factors. It's going to depend on the indication. It's going to depend on the age of the child. It's going to depend on the presence or absence of certain comorbidities of note include cardiac disease, renal disease, and malnutrition. I focus a lot on malnutrition because it's very common in our setting. So these are some of the commonly used fluids in our pediatric ward. We have half strength dara solution and 5% dextrose, abbreviated as that. We can add additional glucose to make it up to 10%. We have quarter strength dara solution in 5% dextrose water, abbreviated as that, and we can also add more glucose to make up the concentration of glucose to 10% of 0.9% saline, which is our normal saline, dextrose saline, we have Ringer's lactate, 5% dextrose water, 10% dextrose or rehydration salts or rehydration solutions or salts for the malnourished child, and low osmolarity or rehydration salts. I didn't go into details looking at the constituents of each of these fluids because I think that's a lecture for another day. So we pretty much are going to be jumping straight into the different scenarios that we have. I divide them into two main groups, pretty much those that have malnutrition and those that do not have malnutrition. So let's begin with maintenance fluid. Remember each and every single day are losing some amount of water through your breath every time you breathe in and out, through your skin every time you sweat. You can't really control these losses. That's why we call them as insensible losses. This maintenance fluid is meant to replace these insensible losses. There is a formula that is used to calculate the maintenance fluid. We call this as a holiday SEGA formula, which is used actually to calculate the maintenance fluid over 24 hours. So how does it work? We say 100 mils for the first 10, hour, 10 kg, 50 mils for the next 10 kg, and 20 mils for the remaining kgs. And remember that this formula is not suitable for neonates that are less than two weeks and those that have conditions that are associated with abnormal losses. So in short, those that have ongoing losses, those that have diarrhea, those that are vomiting, those that are dehydrated, we generally don't want to use this formula because we want to replace those excess fluids that are being lost. So there are different ways in which we're going to be looking at in these subsequent slides. And remember that Here's an example. We have a child that's 26 kg. Remember that we can break this 26 kg into multiples of 10. So if we break it into multiples of 10, we have the first 10 kg plus the next 10 kg, which gives us 20. Remember, then you will have six remaining. So the remainder will be six. So for the first 10 kg, you multiply that by 100. For the next 10 kg, you multiply that by 50. For the six, which is the remainder, we multiply that by 20. So 100 by 10, that's 1,000. 50 by 10, that's 500. 20 by 6, that's 120. So that gives us a total of 1,620 in 24 hours. And remember that if we want to reduce this and to give it over 8 hours, we can divide this by 3, this value by 3, and that gives us 540 mils in 8 hours. What's the fluid of choice? Remember, if there's no malnutrition and they're older than one month, we can use normal saline, but we generally tend to use half strength dara solution commonly in 10% dextrose we can use dextrose saline depending on whether this child 
is having a risk of hypoglycemia. If you anticipate this, you can give something that has glucose in it. We can also use Ringer's lactate. If they do have malnutrition, ideally this child should be on feeds, so they should be on F75 if they're in the stabilization phase and F100 if they're in the rehabilitation phase. If they do have ongoing losses, these should be replaced with re rehydration sauce for the malnourished child. They should be replaced, of course, with the the rhizome or, or, and other fluids such as the F75 and the F100, depending on what phase they are in the treatment of the malnutrition. And remember that the total fluids that we give in neonates are going to be calculated based on the age of life. So we start off on day one at 60 mils per kg per day, and we increase by increments of 20 mils per kg per day to a maximum of 150 mils per kg per day on day seven and moving onwards. Remember on the first 48 hours of life, the fluid of choice is going to be just the 10% dextrose. And then beyond 48 hours, the fluid of choice is going to be a quarter strength dero solution in 10% dextrose. Now, in, there are some cases where we do not want to give the full maintenance fluid and we can actually consider just a part of it. We can consider two thirds of the maintenance, or even sometimes even less. This is in conditions where there is a risk of fluid overload. So there is a risk of pulmonary edema, a risk of cerebral edema. You can also uh, restrict the fluids in cases where you're suspecting there is going to be a complication that is known as syndrome of inappropriate ADH secretion, which is often seen in CNS pathology, such as meningitis, often seen in chest pathology, such as pneumonias, as well as renal disease and cardiac disease. With cardiac disease, you even want to restrict them even much, much further, especially in conditions such as heart failure. Now let's go into the next. So that was, that was with maintenance fluid and how we're going to be given the maintenance fluid. What about those that have these ongoing losses? Now suppose if they have no dehydration and they're not malnourished, our fluid of choice is going to be the oral rehydration salts and the amount is going to be 10 mils per kg per loose dew or per bowel motion. An example, if a child is weighing 10 kg and if they have one bout of diarrhea, they're going to say 10 multiplied by 10, that's 100. So you're going to give them 100 mils of ORS. So the next time they have another bout, you give them 100 mils of ORS. Then if they do have malnutrition and they have no dehydration, we don't give them ORS because it has a high concentration of sodium. We want to avoid that in the malnourished child. So we give them the rehydration solution for the malnourished children. So it's going to be giving at 5 to 10 mils per kg per loose to or per bowel motion. So for, again, if they are weighing 7 kg, 7 multiplied by 5, that's 35. So we give them 35 mils every time they vomit or 35 mils every time they have diarrhea. And this is if they have no dehydration. Then if they have some dehydration, remember that this is going to be managed with our plan B. Remember, no dehydration in the child that's not malnourished is going to be managed by plan A. This is going to be managed by plan B. Then severe dehydration is going to be managed by plan C. So here our fluid of choice is ORS because this child is not malnourished. And we have to take note that if the child cannot actually take the ORS, we can actually give Ringer's lactate IV the same amount. And we're going to be giving it at 75 mils per kg over four hours. So if they're weighing 10 kg, 75 multiplied by 10, that's 750 mils in four hours. Then if they are, have some dehydration and they have malnutrition, our fluid of choice is of course rhizom or your rehydration salts for the malnourished child. And how are we going to give this? So in the first two hours, we just give rhizom on its own. Then in the remaining 10 hours, we're going to be alternating Rizomo with F75, the same amount. So how do we give this? 5 to 10 mils per kg every 30 minutes for the first two hours if they're malnourished and they have some dehydration. Then afterwards, we give 5 to 10 mils of kg, uh, per kg every hour, alternating F75 with Rizomo, the same amount. So let me give you a practical example. Suppose someone is weighing, let's say, 10 kg for argument's sake. So 10 multiplied by 5 is 50 mils. So we'll give them 50 mils every 30 minutes of Rizomo for the first two hours. Then when you reach hour number three, we're going to be giving them F25 the same amount, which is your, 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 your 50 mils of F25 on the third hour. Then the fourth hour, we're going to give the 50 mils again of the Rizomo. Then the sixth hour, we're going to give the 50 mils of F25, alternating until you reach 10 hours. So the maximum total time is going to be 12 hours. If you do not have Rizomo, you can give low osmolarity ORS or half strength standard WHO ORS solution. But of course, you have to add some potassium. You have to add some glucose to that solution. We generally want to avoid the standard 
WHO ORS because it has a high concentration of sodium and has a high risk of hyponatremia, which can actually lead to other complications, including death in this child that is malnourished. Then what if they have severe dehydration? Our fluid of choice is going to be Ringer's lactate or half strength diarrhea solution. We can use normal saline if the above two are not available. How are we going to give this? We give it at 100 mils per kg. Now the total time in which we're going to give this depends on how old the child is. If they're less than one year, we rehydrate them slowly over six hours. If they're greater than one year, we rehydrate them much quicker, half the time, that's three hours. So in the first hour, for those that are less than one year, we give 30 mils per kg. Then in the next five hours, we give 70 mils per kg. And if they're above one year, 30 mils per kg in the first 30 minutes, then 70 mils per kg in the next two and a half hours. What if they have severe dehydration and malnutrition? Our fluid of choice is going to be our half strength diarrhea solution with 5% dextrose, or we can use Ringer's lactate. If the above two are not available, we can use 0.45% saline with 5% dextrose. Remember, we want to avoid normal saline in malnourished children because of the high risk of hyponatremia and the high concentration load of sodium in those fluid. Then the amount that we're going to give, we give 15 mils per kg, and these are rehydrated even much slower. So we give this 15 mils per kg over one hour, then we reassess the child over one hour. If they are still dehydrated and if they are improving, then we can actually repeat in the next hour. Then afterwards, we should follow this up with Rizomoid 5 to 10 mils per kg per hour. Then what if they are in shock? So if they are in shock and they are not malnourished, fluid of choice is normal saline or Ringer's lactate. The amount that we're going to give, remember, we're going to be giving it in boluses. So 20 mils per kg as a bolus. The maximum that we can actually give is 60 mils per kg in the first hour. And then, of course, we manage the child for severe dehydration. Remember that in cardiogenic shock, we do not want to use fluids. We want to avoid fluids in cardiogenic shock. Then if they are in shock and they are malnourished, our fluid of choice is going to be our half-strength diarrhea solution with 5% dextrose, Ringer's lactate solution, you can also add some dextrose to this. Then, of course, if the above are not available, we can use 0.45% saline with 5% dextrose. Again, we start off just like we had with a severe dehydration. The 15 mils per kg over one hour. If the patient doesn't improve, we repeat for the next hour. Then if they still don't improve, we can continue the infusion at 4 mils per kg per hour. But at this point, we must consider treating this child for any infections, cover them on antibiotics. We must consider keeping this child warm. We must consider... Uh, starting our ionotropes, that's our dopamine, at 10 micrograms per kg per minute, we should also rule out hypoglycemia. And remember, if there is cardiogenic shock, we want to avoid fluids. Then what if this child has hypoglycemia, just to end this lecture, because this also has to deal with fluids. If they're a neonate, remember that hypoglycemia, regardless of the age, is a random blood sugar that is less than 3 millimoles in our hospitals. Then if they're neonates, we're going to be giving them 3 to 5 mils per kg of 10% dextrose IV. If they're older child with or without malnutrition, the amount is the same. It's given as a bolus. We give it at 5 mils per kg of 10% dextrose. We give both of these intravenously. And remember that after this bolus, you don't just give it and go away. You must ensure that a glucose infusion is followed to prevent the rebound hypoglycemia. And of course, we must treat the underlying condition because if the child is not feeding, they will keep having his recurrent hypoglycemic episodes. And how do we give this infusion? So we can give it at a rate of 5 to 8 milligrams per kg per minute in infants or 3 to 5 milligrams per kg per minute in older children. I really hope you actually learned so much concerning the fluids in pediatric management if you did, please consider subscribing to the channel, hit the bell notification icon to receive a notification of such amazing content every time I post, drop a like and drop a comment, it directly correlates with the growth of the channel. Till the next video, my name is Dr. Moses Kazivu, until next time, bye bye.